While the roguelike is certainly a crowded genre within the indie scene, I also find it to be one of the most interesting. Having to restart from scratch after a game over is not just punishing, but encourages players to be more methodical in their action, and forces developers to be more creative in design to adapt to their self-imposed design decision. For the King from Iron Oak Games and Curve Digital attempts to stand out from other roguelikes with its unique blend of tabletop inspired RPG gameplay and engaging multiplayer. <laughs> roguelikes are typically tough, and For the King is no different. While many of its story beats and gameplay mechanics are familiar, For the King is quick to punish you if you don't play smart. In For the King, players can test their skills in three different campaigns, The Brink of Chaos, Dungeon Crawl, and The Treasure of Frostbit Peak, which has been added at launch. These three campaigns do differ heavily in plot, though I wouldn't say any of them are particularly engaging, as they serve as more of a means to an end. That being said, gameplay stays consistent between the three, and it should be quite satisfying to those familiar with tabletop RPGs. <laughs> At the beginning of each game, one's customizable party of three starts at level zero with mediocre weapons and pitiful defenses. For the King's overworld is populated with quest objectives, enemies, towns, and unique events. In order to move a character, players must digitally roll for movement points, which are based on said character's speed. This is the tip of the iceberg for the tabletop mechanics, as every action your party takes is tested by one of the core stats. Before long, the game pushes you into combat in order to level up your weak characters. For the King's combat is pretty standard turn-based RPG fare at its core, with players choosing from a set number of attacks and abilities granted by their class and weapon and hoping they get a good roll in order to do maximum damage. If you want to guarantee a roll, whether it be in the overworld or in combat, you can use a limited number for focus points to do so. This creates a fun risk-reward system as players have to decide when the right time to use focus is. This is especially prevalent in dungeons, which provide a gauntlet of enemies and traps for players and have minimal downtime. It's in these caves that most runs will end. For the King isn't hesitant to punish players for dumb moves or unlucky rolls either. Even on the easiest difficulty, it's entirely possible to get a great weapon from a random event in the overworld only to lose soon after in a dungeon because you miss multiple times in a row and an enemy continues to hit you for massive damage. While this is pretty common within the roguelike genre, especially when these aspects are randomized, they are super prevalent in For the King's early game, which may turn off new players at first. Fortunately, the more you play, the more lore you collect from various chests and events. This lore can be redeemed on the main menu in order to unlock things like new characters, special events, and weapons for future runs. While dying early on over and over can be very annoying in For the King, this lore system did entice me to keep hopping back in because I knew things would play out slightly differently the next time through. For the King's solid roguelike setup is bolstered even more by the fact that you can play with friends, both locally and online. While its community is a bit small, those who participate are consistently active and friendly. Things run smoothly, and while it's smart to never stray too far away from each other, having some actions out of your control in a game like this can make things all the more engaging. When it comes to the technical side of things, for the King isn't as smooth as its low poly graphics. The game has actively been in early access for over a year, and while the developers do seem to be working diligently to fix them, I still ran into some game breaking ones. I had save files corrupted on more than one occasion, with them just leading me to a black screen. The menus would occasionally not load right, and the enemies would sometimes ragdoll oddly if killed in the right way. While I have no doubt that Iron Oak Games will iron out these bugs post launch, early adopters should still keep them in mind. As an indie title straight out of early access, For the King isn't without a few rough spots, especially when it comes to the technical side of things. Luckily, the game is saved by its fun tabletop RPG inspired mechanics and multiplayer capabilities, which help it stand out in a sea of roguelikes. As a fan of the genre, I can see myself consistently returning to For the King and think other roguelike fans and people who enjoy tabletop RPGs will definitely find something to enjoy here. Oh! For the full written review, head over to DualShockers.com.